Hello, my name is Ken Udis, and I'd like to welcome everyone to this presentation, uh, responding to the need for open source technology management, continuing education at the Open Apparel 2022 conference, The Value of Open Source. Um, and I would also like to thank the presenters or introduce the presenters really quickly. They will introduce themselves the first time that they speak. But as you can see, we have representatives from all over, from different industries and with different relationships to open source and open source technology technology. In addition, each individual has a slightly different relationship with the OSTM program offered at Brandeis. I'd like to talk a little bit now about the sort of mechanics of the presentation, what we can expect over the next 20 minutes. But we start with a premise, and the premise is, is that the growth of open source software, coupled with recognition of open culture more broadly, has placed stress on the human capacity needs of organizations that are committed to open technology. We're going to sort of introduce that as a topic, and then also over the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk a little bit about the program origin and its purposes, a little bit about the actual program, about our course design, the decisions that we've made, instructional design, and then we're going to speak to a few people as well about their actual experience with the OSTM program. Finally, at the end, there'll be an opportunity for open discussion. I will mention that we're doing this, we're doing this presentation, but two of us, Sean and Jacob, will be available afterwards to talk a little bit about, uh, to answer questions and to talk a little bit about the, or go over the topic. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm wondering though, Jacob, if you could take a moment and talk a little bit about the premise, about your experiences with or insights over how open source software and open source technology is actually growing and what the needs are for human resources. Yeah. Um, so again, my name is Jacob Redding. I do open source strategy and governance for Accenture. So all day I get to think about open source and how teams interact with it. I have a viewpoint that open source is really just a reflection of human nature. It's how we come together. So we, as humans, we kind of have this innate desire to share or collaborate or work together across things, whether it's sports or work or academic uh, activities. And we've seen this throughout the history of civilization, medical advancements, academia. We have libraries set up so that we can share information. That is true throughout, you know, hundreds of years uh, of societies. Now enter software. So that's only in the recent uh, several decades, you know, we got about 40, 50 years of software advancement. And at first, when software came out, it appeared to be in conflict with the orders of business, which was to centralize something. I own it, I create it, I sell it to you. So when we built software, we somewhat started with that premise. I build the software, I give it to you. But that, uh, that human nature sort of kept coming out and open source was, was uh, born it came out of the beginning of software and it sort of just kept trickling there. So while we had IP and patents, we had people that just wanted to share. And open source, that philosophy and these methodologies allow us to bridge that gap. Now, fast forward to now, what, what I see is a lot of companies are running open source whether they know it or not. So statistics, like 80% of the companies run open source software and that's going to be growing. We have Linux for automotive in industry. We have uh, open source within our electrical grid. We have IoT devices or smart devices. In fact, if you own any Wi-Fi device, it probably is running open source uh, in it. So it's out there, it's very prolific. And it's because people want to share information. They wanna build collectively a foundation and then add something of value on top of it. So we've seen this out in the world. And I think a really great example of this was with Google and Microsoft. Microsoft had their own browser, Internet Explorer. Google had their browser, Chrome. Fierce competitors out in the marketplace. Most people have heard of these two browsers, but now they're both collaborating on the same engine that runs those browsers, which is the Chromium engine. It's a recognition that while we might try to be siloed, we still want to collaborate on some things. And these two big behemoths came together and they're in collaboration. Tesla did it with their new cars to try to change the entire industry. Now, the challenge we face in the topic of, of today is how do we get our people who are working in teams to re sort of work in this sort of natural state of, of human nature, this of collaboration? Because we built processes like project management and agile processes and ways of working that are all internal to the company. We create tasks and assign them. Those tasks get done, but it's all within the company. The incentive structures is all siloed or hierarchical. What we talk about is how do we break that up and start working externally to our company and within larger communities and make that a sustainable method. So there's a whole lot in that around strategy, governance, how we change, how we learn, 
and we're relearning things that we learned well in school and we learned on the job and we learned through our careers of how to, when we learn to work siloed, now we're relearning and teaching how to work more collaboratively open and within the standard orders of business. So I think that's how I see it is that open source is really just a return to our natural state of collaboration and, uh, and, and sharing. Great, thank you, Jacob. Uh, I'd, I'd like to then take a, a moment just to provide a little bit of the origin story as well. So you have an idea of what the background of, of this uh, program is. Several years ago, or a few years ago, Pat Masson from OSI reached out to Brandeis University to really start addressing some issues that he was hearing from his uh, constituents, the uh, members of the Open Source Initiative. And he found a receptive audience over at, at Brandeis to sort of try to collaboratively do a program that met the needs that uh, for open source technology management uh, managers. Uh, but of course, true to our, our way of thinking, we sort of approached it as a typical master's program. So it'd be, you know, graduate credits over traditional periods of time using uh, traditional faculty members and the like. So we gave it a try and did it that way for one semester and found that it really sort of missed the mark, that the OSI constituents weren't overly pleased, students weren't overly pleased with the sort of approach. So we sort of took a step back and said, well, what, what, what isn't working? What, what don't people like? And we found that it really was sort of three things. And that is many of the students we were trying to reach out to and attract for this program didn't really want graduate credit for what they were doing. They wanted to get some instruction. They wanted, to do, they wanted contact with other people. They wanted instructors who were and faculty members who were you know, recognized in the field, but they didn't want the traditional stuff. In addition, they didn't want they didn't want or have the time or the inclination to take full semester courses. They weren't terribly interested in 10 to 14 weeks to dedicating 10 to 14 weeks. They wanted a little bit shorter. And in addition, they just simply didn't want to pay for graduate credits frequently. And at Brandeis, graduate instruction is not cheap. So what we wanted to do is be able to break a little bit from that, make it a little bit more affordable, at least at the entry level. So we decided to address all of those issues. And what I'd like to do is invite Brian and Georg to take a few minutes to talk a little bit about our program, program design, and our approach to uh, instruction. So Brian, do you want to start off with this? Yeah, sure thing. Happy to, Ken. Thanks. Uh, I'm Brian Berenshausen. I manage the open source program at GitLab. Uh, I am an instructor in the Brandeis program as well. Uh, and I was also a student. I took a number of courses in, in the program. So what I'd like to do is just offer a brief overview of, of the way that the program courses are organized in order to kind of achieve the goals that Jacob was articulating earlier. And what we have here is a program that's organized into sort of three tracks. Uh, it's a six course program uh, organized into to three tracks. Um, and you see them all here. Okay, thanks, Gayor. Uh, the first track is called Open Source Community Development, and it consists of two courses, Cultivate an Open Source Community and Integrating Open Source Communities in Corporate Environments. And this track really focuses on building, nurturing, sustaining, and interacting with upstream open source communities, right? Without a doubt, I think, uh, you know, learning to interact and coordinate with an external community of participants in work that is really central to one's business uh, is, is difficult and often really intimidating work. Uh, so these courses aim to help open source practitioners um, do it well, you know, learn how to do that work well. And connecting company and community is often a really delicate and tricky business. And the courses aim to help with that uh, as well, that work as well. Uh, the second track is called uh, Open Source Development Fundamentals. Working in, uh, and it consists of, of these, these two courses you see here, open source workflow and infrastructure and production of distributed open source systems. I, I, you know, this track's really predicated on, on the idea that working in open source often requires an, an incredible amount of new infrastructure, right? Perhaps tooling that might be unfamiliar to organizations who are approaching open source work for the first time. You know, as Jacob mentioned, it's can uh, require some unlearning and relearning, right? So working in open source with these tools often involves new ways of working, not just learning how to, how to use new tools, but again, learning new processes, learning new techniques, and, and learning to be, you know, decentralized, learning to, to work asynchronously, learning to work iteratively, and releasing early and often, and, and uh, working transparently and publicly, too, right, with all your work, uh, bugs and all, out there. And those new methods require dedicated skill and practice. Uh, so the courses in this track are designed to help students see how open source projects and communities work, how they get their work done, then consider how they can bring those practices 
into their own businesses, into their own enterprises. And the last track here is the business of open source. It consists of these two courses that you see here, open source business practices and establish an open source program office. So again, this track is really predicated on the idea that open source is not a business model, right? Uh, but embracing new open source licenses and strategies often compels a company to reevaluate and even transform its business model in some ways, right? How it generates value and for whom it generates value and what value even looks like for the organization. So these courses help students understand how open source might impact the business, what kinds of business models uh, that include open source have found success historically, and how you could uh, or might emulate those strategies or parts of those strategies to find success in your own enterprise, and then really explore ways that you can prepare to restructure internally around new forms of, of work and new forms of the of value generation. Uh, to both articulate and support an open source strategy for your entire organization. So that's the third track. And you'll see, I just want to make one final note. And you'll see here that the courses in these tracks don't really focus much on the technical work of producing open source. There's not a lot of coding and development here. Uh, that's because I think this program is really has a unique focus, and that's on the sort of people process side of open and open source, right? How do we help people understand how to work better and integrate open source practices into their organizational missions and into their organizational processes. So that's how the courses kind of are divided up, but I wanna let Georg take you on a little deeper dive into sort of how we, uh, how the courses themselves are each structured, how students complete them, the types of work that they do and, and what they can earn when they complete them. So I'll turn it over to him. Yeah, thank you for that overview, Brian. My name is Georg Blink. I'm the director of sales at Betrugia. I am the instructor for the open source community development courses. And that, that's my, my background. I did a whole PhD on open source communities. So always happy to talk about this. Now, when you take these courses as part of the open source technology management program here at Brandeis, you can take one course at a time, just sign up for one that interests you, and then you can earn the verification of completion. When you take two courses in one area, then you get a digital badge from the open source initiative in Brandeis University. When you complete all three topic areas, then you earn the certificate in the open source technology management program. And for those who want to take it one step further and earn the graduate credits, because this is part of Brandeis graduate programs, you can take the assessment for credit. There's one for each topic area, and then you earn three credit areas for each area. So a total of nine credits are available. And so if you do everything, you get three digital badges, you get the certificate in open source technology management, and you get nine graduate credits. Now, what's the cost for doing this? Each course is $499. Each assessment for credit is $990. And then as a member of the open source initiative, you also get a 15% discount. And to, to give you a little bit more, more idea of what each course um, provides and how it's structured, we, as, as Ken already indicated, we've made this or interesting for industry professionals. So we know there is a big time constraint. There's, we, we kept the requirement of being in the course for a certain amount of time to a minimum. So there's only one hour of in-person meetings per week. And that is where we sync up on the topics of the week, where we talk about the assignments, where we have class discussions, and everything else is self-paced. And for that, we provide open materials. So all the materials that the courses rely on are open licensed. You can find them on the internet. You can share them with others. You can bookmark them, use them later. One thing that I'm particularly proud of is the voices from the industry, where we interviewed industry uh, professionals to share their experiences and knowledge and provide advice for the different courses and topics for each week. So these are short interviews that all the students that you can view at your own time. Then we have some knowledge checks each week that only take about five minutes to complete. And we have assignments or group projects, depending on the course, where we get hands-on with uh, what we are teaching, what we're talking about. 
And with all of that, that is how a typical course works. It's always four weeks. And then we have four weeks of materials and assignments. And then we have one additional meeting in week five to wrap it up, to talk about any loose threads and finish it up. So well, four plus one weeks is each course. I turn it back to you, Ken. Thank you very much, uh, Georg and Brian for, the, for that overview. And I, I want to just mention that we're pretty fortunate that we have two students, individuals who took courses and completed the program. And I guess that I'd like to get some feedback or just hear a little bit about your experience with the uh, OSTM program. So uh, Sean, would you like to kick that off? Certainly. Thanks, Ken. I'm Sean Morrison. I was a student that went through the entire OSTM program, and I have been a, a researcher with the Department of Defense now for about 20 plus years. And I've been involved in open source for a very long time, but my interest in this program was really peaked when I, I saw the announcement from Patrick Mason that there was this collaboration with Brandeis. He was the director of OSI at the time, and that it really piqued my interest. The idea of being able to be introduced to a field that I'm familiar with, but from this academic perspective, it sounded really interesting and ultimately it, it, it was, it was incredibly interesting and really can't um, highlight how special the content I found was that, you know, Gary was mentioning with having this content from industry professionals talking about open source um, throughout each of the courses was incredibly valuable. And moreover, like the, the short-term micro course approach just really made it easy to, to try this out, to see if it was worthwhile to gauge you know, whether the, the workload is manageable and was it a major commitment, not a major commitment. And each class was like a few hours a week. So that made it as a professional for me, very, very manageable. Um, the fact that you could jump in anywhere in the program was also a little bit of reassuring so that if I knew that something came up that I would be able to sort of adapt my schedule. I really appreciated the, the fact that the classes were also partially synchronous and partially asynchronous. You know, a lot of the ideas of open source are about building relationships and community. And the courses were structured in that manner where we had interactions with other students. We had interactions with, with the instructors that were quite rewarding on a, on a weekly basis. I found myself you know, wanting to come back to class and interested in the work and interested in, in these connections that were being built in. And again, learning about open source from this more structured perspective um, in terms of technology, in terms of thinking about current problems that are going on, working through these hypothetical situations in the courses. And that that's what led me to go through and not only earn all the badges and then get the certificate. But then it was so compelling that I found it like, well, if this was so good, well, let's do the assessment as well. And for me, that was actually the, the highlight of the entire experience, being able to work on that assessment, which ended up becoming like a research paper that I worked on with Dr. Udis. Um, I learned to apply structures that were learned in these courses over a period of about six months. Um, and it was just a fascinating experience and it was incredibly rewarding. And that, for me, became motivation for then once that was done to actually enroll into the program, which is what I'm currently working on today. So for me, this was a resounding success. And I, uh, I you know, in my professional environment working with the government, I'm like, I really wish all my coworkers could, you know, be required to go through a program like this. If you have any sort of interaction with open source, the, it's, I think, particularly valuable to people who are on that periphery that don't really know what open source really is because they're not necessarily practitioners, but they're involved in it and they're using it. And they don't even necessarily know that they're using it. And I I've been able to take lots of techniques and lessons and, and communications from these courses back to my professional work and, and leverage them and use them to actually improve our business operations, improve our effectiveness at work. So for me, this has been a resounding success. Excellent. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Brian, do you also have, do you have anything you'd like to chime in with? Or? Sure. Well, I mean, it's, it's, that's, a, you know, Sean's a tough act to follow because he's such an excellent student and uh, we were classmates for a time. Unlike Sean, I did not finish all the courses in the program, but I've instructed and taken a good combination of all of them. And I, I would just add one thing. And that is that one thing I really appreciate about the way the Brandeis program is set up, both as a student and as an instructor, is the sort of, as, as Sean alluded to, the hybrid nature of the sort of synchronous, asynchronous work. You know, students meet once a week for a synchronous meeting to have to kind of have a, a, a synchronous discussion, which is really great. But most of the other work is asynchronous. And so what you really get as a student is a kind of opportunity to do coursework, to do school, the same way that one would do open source, right? And not just learn about open source, but to learn about working in open source and what it feels like as, as a practitioner. And that manifests in a number of ways. So it, it, you're working asynchronously with a distributed remote group, right? We're, you're using chat, we use matrix and, and element, 
in the program, open source chat protocols to, uh, to create community through ongoing conversations outside those synchronous course meetings, right? We're chatting and sending links and things and interacting in our chat room all throughout the week. You know, I worked asynchronously on my projects with my partner, for example, you know, he, he was in a different time zone. So he'd work at his nighttime, right on, on a project and then, you know, version control that commit his code to with Git, and I'd come and pull his changes in the morning and I'd continue writing our assignment, right? From, from that. And then I'd push my changes back, right? Sounds a lot like, uh, like the way that open source developers work, right? So I would just add that one of the things I really appreciated about the program was, you know, from a student's perspective is the way that it gave me as a student, a small taste of what it feels like to kind of work in open source, asynchronous, iterative, with a remote distributed group, and uh, in, in a really communal way through a lot of the same tools that open source communities use. And if I may chime in with uh, experience as an instructor, I really enjoy the diverse voices that come together in these courses. We have some students that have been in open source for a really long time. They know the, the origin stories. They have been there, they've lived it, and they can share even deeper stories than I can. But then we also have uh, students who are very new to open source, who have heard about it, who are interested in it, and who are always pulling from their own experience and their own professional backgrounds examples for how open source relates to their experience and work. And it's really awesome to see those conversations emerge for, for how everyone wraps their head around it and helps each other out uh, to understand uh, open source a little bit better. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I appreciate it. And I know that we're running short on time. So what I'd like to do is um, just put the final slide up and you know, sort of before launching into the live part of this with some discussion questions and comments with Sean and Jacob, I do want to thank every, <laughs> I do want to thank all of the panelists, uh, presenters. I want to also thank all of the great people at Brandeis who have supported this program and moved it forward. I'd like to especially though acknowledge and thank the continued support and sort of professional engagement from everyone at the Open Source Initiative. Without them, this would just, this wouldn't even have been an idea for us. So thank you very much and have a great conference. All right, well, we've been chatting in the, uh, in the public chat here. Um, so we got Greg and, and Jen. <laughs> we are live people. Uh, it would be a great bot. I don't know if I could have trained that bot to have that conversation. But uh, if you have any questions, we can sort of dive a little deeper into things. And Greg, one thing I'll address as, as you sort of talking about it is, you know, our, our, our goal in getting involved with this and where it's at is to take this a little bit out of just like, oh, this is open source. So it's this side like niche thing. And more like, this is just sort of how we manage projects these days. This is how business is done. This is how a software project is created. So for, for a really long time, open source has been like, okay, you learn how to do a software development, and then you learn how to do it in the open source way versus no, the, the way to do software development or to manage a software business or to run a software project is the open source way. These are no longer two separate things, but to do that, we have to do a whole lot of things around well, how do you manage a team that, you know, don't have the incentives? You know, how do you do a, an agile system with people who don't work at your company? You know, where are those incentive structures? You know, how do you manage a tax, task management system for people that are, well, you may have never met, may never meet, <laughs> and you have no sort of like direct interaction with, but yet it's moving along. I, mean, I think Tesla is a great example of that. You know, they're like, we're going to change the industry by open sourcing a lot of this stuff, and we want to start collaborating. Um, across uh, manufacturers, but it took a while and it's a completely new business model. <clears throat> no problem. We hear that you don't have a mic. <clears throat> it's great. Huh? Used to run an online course and how to run an online course. <laughs> we're, we're still at that, that state of uh, technology. <laughs> And I appreciate all your, your questions and comments, Greg. It's been really great you know, having this one-on-one, this -on -one, right? <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's great to see the, the interest and in, in questions come up. Yeah, no, I would just say that to, to anyone who's reading this in hindsight, feel free to reach out to us. To, um, Dr. Udis' email was uh, Ken Udis at uh, Brandeis Study to you. Um, 
happy to have any discussions or interactions on this presentation. It's really a fascinating program. So I do encourage anyone who's interested in the program to reach out if there's questions on, on the academics, on the curriculum, on the experience from a student's perspective, educator's perspective. Um, it's really, a, I think, a novel approach to open source technology management. So it's uh, great to get the word out. But thank you to the organizers and, and to you, um, Jacob, for all your work on this too. Awesome. Thanks, John. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, everyone. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. There's a lot of people talking about this, so happy to help.